For me, it's the artist's interpretation that matters, but the computer as a tool plays a vital part, of course. It was Roger Fry in 1912 who coined the term visual music to describe the work of Kandinsky, a very apt description, as you'll see. Sometime after that, in the 1920s, Oscar Fischinger, an artist working in Frankfurt and Berlin, invented techniques whereby a series of frames showing abstract moving images could be put together as short films. Before I say more, I'll demonstrate one of my own pieces of visual music. As often with my pieces, the idea was sparked off by a composition for solo clarinet. It was a visit to the V&A's Decode exhibition that first aroused my curiosity in programming and computation. Many of the exhibits were built with processing, an advanced program for generating moving imagery, which prompted me to attend Carsten Schmidt's classes at the V&A Sackler Centre. Tongue in cheek. This is what the inventors of processing have to say about their achievement. As an architect, I fall right into the middle of the processing trap. Not only has my career as a designer been ruined, but I've turned to less gainful employment as an artist. Just for the moment, I'm redonning my architectural cap to talk about geometry. I have a lifelong fascination with geometry, 
not only Euclidean geometry, which underpins many of the buildings we see around us, uh, and this design for a Japanese exhibition, but also Islamic geometry, which has often formed the basis of my own planning and design solutions. It's the basis, too, for the main work I'm going to perform today, three arabesques. But first, I want you to follow me in taking an intrepid step into the unknown. I've taken just one Islamic pattern to illustrate how our brains might work, how brain cells cooperate in assemblies of thousands to generate ideas, thoughts and memories. Multiplying the single pattern many times over produces a multitude of ribbons which appear to interweave one with another in dazzling complexity. Is it this type of geometry, I wonder, that could provide a clue to how axons grow, interact and generate synapses or neurotransmissions at approximately 100 per second? Nobody knows the answer, of course. It's proving to be one of the most intractable problems faced by scientists today. But this isn't stopping me testing my fanciful proposition in the next piece of visual music. Memories are made of this. I'll perform just an excerpt. The swathes of fast-moving notes in the Chagrin piece reflect, orally, accents sprouting and navigating at speed throughout the brain. In three arabesques, continuing my predilection for geometry, I've chosen to weave a set of variations on hexagons, a common theme in Islamic architectural decoration. Francis Poulenc's duet for two clarinets forms the sound world for the piece. I play one part live, the other is recorded.
In all my pieces, those I've shown you and others, I aim to explore the intrinsic relationship that exists between music and abstract imagery. Usually, for me, music acts as a springboard, but there seems to be no limit to where the splash of an idea will spread visually. New ways of juxtaposing the two art forms give promise of engaging the senses of audiences, both orally and visually, at one and the same time. I hope this has happened for you today.